At this early stage, at least, it seems American voters are in no mood for poll-driven, focus group-tested, cliché-talking politicians. Honest and authentic are in, or at least what seems to be honest and authentic. Craig Shirley, conservative political strategist, he joins us now from Virginia to try and help explain what will this ultimately mean for the race for the White House. Craig, you know, I always thought Americans vote with their gut, how they feel about a candidate, and right now, a lot of Republicans feel pretty good about what they're hearing from Donald Trump, and a lot of Democrats feel the same about Bernie Sanders. Yeah, I think you're right, John, is that uh, they seem to be coming across as authentic, and, and although that's not the only consideration that Americans make uh, in putting in voting for their, uh, their candidates for office, uh, I think if you look at the history of American presidential politics, one of the big factors that they did take into consideration was authentic. John Kennedy was more authentic than, uh, than uh, Richard Nixon. Uh, Richard Nixon was more authentic than Hubert Humphrey. Jimmy Carter was more authentic than uh, Gerald Ford. So that has always been a, a factor that, uh, been that's gone into consideration. So right now, if it's about being open and honest, not guarded, that seems to be everything that Hillary Clinton appears to be not. Does that explain why she's not doing so well in the polls? Well, I think that she's that there's a, a giant upheaval on the left and the right. It's just that uh, everybody is upset with Washington. Everybody's upset with the political classes, and everybody's upset with concentrations of power, whether it's uh, Washington or New York or uh, Detroit or what have you. And she's she's un unfortunately on the wrong side of that narrative. Whereas, uh, you know, uh, Donald Trump and others uh, are on the right side of that narrative. Yeah, I want to talk about the moment right now because, as you say, th this sort of character assessment, this honesty, has always been a part of American politics, but it does seem to be so much more pronounced than ever before. You know, Trump makes about seven gaps an hour. In the past, that would have sunk other candidates, but he turns it into a rallying cry. So what's going on here? Why is it different this time? I think that people are focused on not what he's uh, saying about uh, trivial things, but what he's saying uh, about the uh, big things. And they're giving him a pass because they know he's not a politician. And in a way, he's the anti-politician. And in an odd sort of way, it's, it's probably working to his benefit so he can say you know things about John McCain or Megan uh, Kelly or whatever else and in an odd sort of way they're working to his benefit because he's speaking people perceive that he's speaking truth to power and they like that at some point though do Trump and Bernie Sanders and Ben Carson do they max out at some point or have they plateaued already which means that neither one has a real chance of winning the party's nomination that's a, that, you know that's a great question. In the past, uh, populist outside reformers have uh, have come up and flamed out. Oliver Wendell Douglas and others uh, have have come up and flamed out. Reagan ran in 1980 as a populist reformer, and he didn't. Jimmy Carter ran in '76 as a populist reformer, and he won. So uh, it, there is a dialectic to American presidential politics. Every 20 or 30 years, uh, whether it's from Andrew Jackson to uh, Abraham Lincoln to uh, Theodore Roosevelt, a reformer does step forward, and we're in that. Uh, that time frame now so that it, it could be you could argue that Obama was in that time frame too and maybe he was the reformer or that he is a detour in history or we're going back to a populist reformer outsider like a uh, like a Donald Trump do you think Donald Trump is uh, the Ronald Reagan of this generation no uh, there are interesting similarities but there are, there are, there are vast differences too is is that uh, Reagan was a successful two-term governor uh, the issues of 1980 were, were were much different. There was some overlap as far as Washington uh, corruption and cleaning up and uh, things like that. But the the, the big issue of, of 1980 was the Soviet Union and the Cold War. And of course, there's the that that issue has been put to rest successfully. I'm so glad you felt. I'm glad you made that point. Uh, a quick mention of your book. It's the call. It's called The Last Act: The Final Years and Emerging Legacy of Ronald Reagan. Uh, Craig Shirley, thank you so much for being with us. We appreciate it.